Einstein and the political implications of replacing her in the Senate. Let's bring in former Assemblyman from California, Mike Gatto, and let's welcome back Mr. John Burnett in studio. All right, uh, Mike, there have been a few names thrown out on who is on the short list to replace Senator Feinstein. Your take. So first of all, it's, it's extraordinary that uh, a governor gets this many appointments. <laughs> We'll have appointed both of our U.S. senators and also two other constitutional officers in California. Uh, that being said, my money's on Shirley Weber. She's our secretary of state. She's a brilliant woman, fantastic speaker. And I think she's somebody who would hold the post with dignity and, uh, and be a fantastic caretaker for the next year and a half. Yeah, John. Governor Newsom, he says he's going to appoint a black woman. Your take on that? Well, I think he should appoint the best person who's well qualified. Uh, I'm not in that game. I don't, I'm not in that race. But the thing is, is that he should folk. This is an opportunity for him to at least get one thing right in California with this appointment. But we already know that he's committed to play identity politics. That is one of the games that the Democrats play. I'm not saying that any one of these individuals are not qualified. All I'm saying is that he should make sure that he uh, expands the talent pool and make the right choice. You know, Mike, I want to ask you this. I, I know you're you're a Democrat, and so I, but I also want to take this moment um, to just recognize uh, Senator Feinstein for truly having an incredible career, whether uh, some of our viewers uh, agree with her politics or not. But also, she was a trailblazer for women in politics, and I think that's something that definitely deserves to be recognized, uh, even though that she was also, even though she was also a policy icon for the left. So, so just in your experience, being uh, obviously in California. Uh, Uh, maybe just share a, a moment or two or a memory. Well, I mean, she was uh, a tremendous trailblazer. All of us remember 1992, the so-called year of the woman. This was the year that uh, all sorts of young girls out there started to look into the halls of power and say, hey, that person reminds me of me or my mother. So it's a wonderful, wonderful thing when that happens. A lot of times now, though, people are talking about Senator Feinstein, not just as the first in so many ways, but also as the last. Um, I know to the rest of the country, you know, California seems very far left, but the truth is in California, Senator Feinstein was a moderate. She was a centrist. And people are now talking about how um, whoever replaces her will probably be significantly to her left. And so what that does to the composition of the U.S. Senate, I'll leave it up to everybody else out there to decide. Yeah, quite a list of accomplishments there. She's the first woman Democrat on the Senate Judiciary Committee, first woman to chair the Senate Select Committee. That list goes on. She broke down a lot of barriers, a lot of doors for women all over the place. John, I want to ask you, what's your message to anyone out there trying to break down barriers? You're a successful guy. Your message to anyone chasing down a dream here? Well, stay true to your values, which she did, and serve, you know, uh, modestly but diligently. And when you look at it, she was awarded with longevity. So my wishes for a family, my, my condolences go out to her family, and they should hold their head extremely high. All right. Uh, wise words and, and beautifully spoken. Uh, we're just going to leave it there again, um, because, again, a, a, a political powerhouse has been lost. Diane Feinstein, uh, dead at the age of 90. Mike Gatto, thanks so much for joining us. And, of course, John Burnett, stick around. More after this.